Hey, it's the footy coach here. Throughout the history of professional football, formations have been a big talking point amongst fans and pundits in the media. Why is he playing 4-3-3? Should be playing 4-4-2 today. Why don't we play with three at the back and make sure we're doing this and that? And you hear it all the time. And to be fair, formations have been important in a visual representation of what a football team is set up like. Since the olden days when there was the WM formation and you had two centre-backs, three midfielders and five attackers to Brazil 442 and Johan Cruyff's total football which brought in the 433 all of these are just representations of how teams would play and I'm just here to tell you today that formations are not important at all I've got some great examples for you of why formations are not important first we're just going to start off with some of the more dominant teams that we've seen in the last 10 years 10 15 years starting with the Real Madrid side here um, they're set up here in a 4-3-3 formation, you could call it. And the way they'd play was the two fullbacks, Marcelo and Carvajal, would be flying up the pitch. Karim Benzema would be dropping in as a number nine, which is why he didn't score as many. While Cristiano Ronaldo, who scored a lot of goals, obviously was playing as an inside forward on the left-hand side with Bale on the right-hand side. Again, Bale was scoring goals as well. Now, if you dropped Benzema here and Cristiano Ronaldo and Bale went up here, this would change his formation into a 4-4-2 diamond. So what formation did this dominant Real Madrid side play? Were they playing 4-3-3? Was it a 4-4-2 diamond? And that's the problem with formations because what these players were doing on the pitch was dictated not by the formation, not by their structure, but what their exact roles were. You had Casemiro whose job was to break up play but also to start play. He was doing a similar role to what Busquets was doing at Barcelona. Albeit not as elegantly on the ball, Casemiro was still a world-class defensive midfield and he was great at building up play too. Cruz and Modric were the ones who all the passing was facilitated through. They'd keep the ball, they'd rotate the ball and they'd look for their attackers in opportune moments. The fullbacks used to get up the pitch and you know they were flying up the pitch. Sometimes Real Madrid would have a five-man attack and two centre-backs. So what formation would that create? It's not about the formation, it's about the roles that these players had. We can go back into time now um, to the early 90s with Cruyff Barcelona. This was a magical team, you know, the dream team, three at the back. But if you know your early 90s football, you'd realise that Sergi Ferrer, they're playing here in a three-man defence. Yeah, both of them are fullbacks. Ronald Koeman was a centre-back, but he was also a midfielder. He was one of the best goal-scoring defenders in the history of football. In, in this case, he was the lone centre-back. Up top, you had Laudrup as the false nine. Yet their main striker was Risto Stoichkov. Everyone knows he's a legendary striker, but here he is, nominally in this 3-4-3, wide left. And they've got like a diamond four in the middle. There's no one out wide. This is when they have the ball. This is how Barcelona used to play under Johan Cruyff. Then when you get to off the ball, here they've got a four-man back line with Pep Guardiola dropping in, Bugaristin, Eusebio playing as two midfielders, and then it's a four-man attack with Laudrup dropping in. Or is it two defensive midfielders and four midfielders, so they're playing a 4-6-0. So what formation were this Barcelona team playing? Were they playing a 3-4-3? Were they playing a 4-6-0, 4-2-4, 4-4-2? doesn't matter. What matters was the roles that they had in the team. We all know Risto Stoichkov was the actual striker, and he would be the one in the box who would be scoring the goals, and we all know that Michael Lavdrop was their number 10. One of the greatest 10s ever actually. So again, the formation does not matter here. Can move on to one of the greatest teams of all time. The Barcelona says 2011 team here. Got this from Eurosport. Um, Pedro and Villa might be in the wrong places here. But in this team, of course, Messi played as a false nine. Villa played from the left and Pedro from the right. David Villa was a striker. Now, in essence, you could say just as the Real Madrid side, Messi would drop in here and Pedro and Villa were the actual strikers. So this wasn't a 4-3-3, it was a 4-4-2 diamond as well. Now, we also know that Dani Alves would fly up the pitch and he would create five men in midfield, leaving PK and Mascarano alone, while Abidal would also go up the pitch, leaving two men at the back. So, two, five, three. What formation is it? It's not a formation. It's just a structure here. And this is something that is prevalent through all football teams, in fact. What players do on the pitch is dictated by what roles they're given. Sergio Busquets here, who was playing 
playing as a deepest midfielder, as a defensive midfielder, we call it. He was also a playmaker from there. He would allow Barcelona to build up from the back and to break break through any teams that tried to press him. He could have played easily further up the pitch, where Iniesta and Xavi are playing as well. But his role in the team was that, so he was stuck there. But Dani Alves' his role was more of a right midfielder, right winger. He was flying up the wing. But this was when they had the ball. Off the ball, he'd be back here at right back. So off the ball, maybe Barcelona did set up like this. But again, this is why the formations are not important and roles are more important. Finally, we could take a look at modern day side and Let's take a look at the only unbeaten team in Europe at the moment, which is Bayer Leverkusen. They play with the three at the back. You've got Tar, Kosanu, Hincapi sometimes, Xhaka, Palacios in midfield, Grimaldo, Frimpong, who are the wing backs, and Schick or Boniface with Florian Wirtz as a 10 left winger. Jonas Hoffman doing the same thing here. It's a 3 4 3, right? So Xabi Alonso's formation is a 3 4 3. However, this is how they are playing when the ball's here with the centre back and they're being pressed centre backs are like this in the line so they're able to pass the ball out these two midfielders are coming in close like this here's Grimaldo the wing back normally he's here sometimes to allow this to happen and Frimpong stays high up Jonas Hoffman drops here Wurtz drops here as well and it's like this it's kind of I don't know what this formation is but the reason they have this is so that they can break the press and then you know quickly play it out maybe it goes there Grimaldo goes here they're out here then suddenly they're like this with the entire team of the pitch and Kosunu actually gets forward as well because Fring Pong ends up up here. Now what they've got is when they're in the opposition half they've got a two-man defense and Grimaldo is up here maybe sometimes he's even in on the inside and that's his role in the team. Kosunu's role in the team is to get forward as from center back so this is a 2-4-3-1 let's call it because Florian Wirtz in the formations that you see before the game is listed as a left winger but he is always playing in these inside spaces here. He's their creator. He's the one they try to get the ball to to create chances. So what position is he in that 3-4-3? Is he actually wide left? Or is he playing as a number 10? How do you represent that in those pre-game graphics? So the roles are more important. And I'm saying this to you as a coach and a manager. A formation is there sort of as a structure for how you are going to tell your players how you're going to play. How you're going to tell the public, this is how we play. We play this way. But in essence, we're not trying to build a house when you're playing football. When you're building a house, an architect develops a blueprint and it's precise. Because that's how the house should be built. Formations are like blueprints, but they're imp- precise because football is a game of fluidity and it's a game with roles players have roles and your tactics dictate what those roles are formation is just a small part of it so when you hear someone complaining that the team should be set up in a 4-3-3 or a 4-3-2-1 or a 4-2-3-1 that's not what that's not what is important what's important is the roles that you have within that team this has been a different video to what i normally do hope you've enjoyed it obviously i don't have the tactical boards that all of the other youtube gurus <laughs> do have if you did enjoy the video please do like and subscribe and as always thank you for watching